Today we're looking at a new feature in Google Sheets called Named Functions. So the simplest way to think of this is a way to save your own formulas and reuse them for later. And so we're just going to dive right in. So I have a couple of formulas here that we're going to convert and then we're going to go to a slightly more complicated one. Just to give you an idea of how this works. So this is an example of the one that Google gives an example of is a contains formula. So this formula discovers if this value in H4 is contained in our column A. So it's just doing a match and it's returning true if it occurs or we just put something like this, it returns false. So we're going to go ahead and take this and make a named function. So let's copy this formula. And then let's go ahead and open our named function sidebar. So under data, named functions, we have this pop up over here. So you can go through the examples you like, and it shows you what the function we're about to use, or you can go straight to add new function. And so we're going to go ahead and do contains. And this will be a description for the function. And if any of this doesn't make sense, if you simply open a function in Google Sheets and you see this formula definition, that is what we're writing over here. And so this about is what we're turning right here. And so you're just writing description for the function that you're making. So we can just say returns true if the search key is found in the search column. And so now the argument placeholders, we have to put an argument placeholder for each variable we have in our formula that we need to set. So we have two here. We have the search key and the search column. So let's just go ahead and call it search key and search column like that. And then in the formula definition, we will take that formula. And so all we have to do then is swap out. So this is our search key. And then this is our search column. And so you can see we use each of the argument placeholders in the formula and we swap them out for the relevant positions. Go to next. Now we get to set the details for those parameters that we set. So we have search key and search column. So we can say search key is the key we want to search for. And for this, we'll just use where it actually is in here, H4. And then search column, column that we want to search. And as an example, we can do A3 through A. That's it. Hit create. You can see it pop up over here. And so now in our spreadsheet, we can use our new function contains. You can see here it shows up as a name function. Let's go up here and pull this up. And so here you can see, looks like we have a typo there. Returns true if the search key is found in the search column. So you can go back and edit if you need to. And resave. And there we go. Now it's updated. So returns true if the search key is found in the search column. It tells you the form of the description and then search key, the key we want to search for and column we want to search. So now all we have to do in here is H4 and A3 through A. Hit enter and we are done. So you can see the formula is these amount shorter and not very confusing. And so this is a great way to do reusable functions especially when you come to more complicated situations. So next we're going to take another one. We're going to take this sum ifs where we have this before and after we want to get all the sales that are equal to or between these two dates. And so this is what our formula looks like. And you can see this can be a little convoluted if you're not really understanding what's going on here. So we could set this as a reusable function. And so let's go ahead and jump right in. So again, the data, name functions, add a new one. We'll call this sum date. And this will be turn a total from a column where dates are between or equal to start and end date. So what we need here is we need our amount column, date column, start date, and end date. And then we'll take our formula in here. And so let's do our amount column 
date column. Start date. Date column again. And our end date. Hit next. And we don't have to fill all these in. But let's go ahead and just put something in here. So amount column. And then we'll go ahead and put this in here. C, date column, F, F, start date. So this one we can put H9 or H8, I think it's in. And then the end date and create. So now we can use our sum date. And if we pull this open, we can see our description right here. So let's go ahead and pull up here. So amount column, date, date through C, date column, F, V through F, and then we can do our H8 and H9. You can see there, we return the same total. So this makes it easy to manipulate what may be a more complicated formula and make it simple. So what, for one last example, we're gonna go here where we have a formula that populates several columns based on our data. So some sales, cost of goods, and shipping data. And from that, we're calculating profit, our margin, and our total cost. So you can see the formula can get a little complicated, but we're going to turn this into a very simple formula. So let's go date, name functions, add a new one, and let's call this profit margin maybe. We'll try that out. Function description. Determine profit, margin, and total cost based on sales, cost of goods, and ship costs. So one thing to keep in mind is you can make this specific to what you're working with and use functions perhaps that you need to reuse on a regular basis. So for example, if you get data like this on a regular basis and you need to determine profit, margin, and total cost, this is a great way to save yourself a bunch of time and have a formula that is easy to use. So here, we need sales column, we need cost to good column, and we need ship column. And then we can take our formula, and we can do just do our replacing here. So once we have all of our ranges swapped out, we can hit next and we can fill in these as needed. And once we have our formula completed, we can go ahead and take our formula here and swap it out. So start typing our profit margin. And now you can see all we need instead of our long formula is just three simple formulas. We just need our ranges for C3 through C, D3 through D, and E3 through E. And now we have the same result in a much easier formula. So that's all we're gonna cover for today, but I hope that sparks some ideas in you for you on how you can use this to simplify many of your daily processes or monthly processes where you have to constantly come up with long, complicated formulas and how you can reduce them to a simple formula with a few inputs. Thank you very much, folks. See you again soon.